Hello and welcome to The Sherlock Show. I'm Georgie Courage cole and joining me on the sofa today are Laura Black and Lou Huff. Welcome, ladies. Today, we're going to be chatting all things lockdown fashion, from the things we've bought to what we're doing for date night now. Dr Georgie Fraser is here for a women's health clinic. That means pelvic floors, periods, hormones, menopause, you name it, we're covering it. Wine writer, the legendary Matthew Jukes, is here with his supermarket wine picks. Trust me, if this man says it's good, it is. Plus, Sarah Corbett Winder is back, showing us a few of her favourite summer dresses out there right now. But I wanted to start today by talking about the Black Lives Matter movement that was sparked by the death of George Floyd. Like a lot of brands and influencers, we have been on the receiving end of quite a lot of feedback in the last 10 days. Some of it fair, some of it not, some of it constructive, some of it not, and some of it downright vicious. We haven't talked about it on the show yet because this is only my second show back and all I'll say is I almost couldn't walk through those doors for the first show I hosted last week. Whilst I appreciate that we're publishers, um, as a white woman, it's hard to say anything without having every word you say scrutinised and misconstrued. So I'm going to flag now that I won't be responding to any comments personally below. But if you do want to share any constructive feedback, then do please email info at sherlux.com. Moving forward, I wanted to read you the statement that I wrote last week that was posted on our Instagram, and it goes, I wanted to share our next steps as a business in addressing diversity at Sherlux. Believe me, we are taking action. Whilst it's early days and change takes time, we're currently working on building a women of colour focus group to take place in July. Following that, we'll be putting in place a women of colour panel to help guide us on this journey. We have fully evaluated our content strategy and feel that creating knee-jerk content and creating quick win measures would come across as disingenuous. Instead, we're taking a 360 approach towards all of our content and specifically looking at how it supports, speaks to and includes all women. As for recruitment, this is the change that will take the most time, but please be assured that it's a top priority. If you know of any BAME candidates with a passion for style, journalism and broadcasting, then do please get in touch. As I said, I'm not going to comment any further because I'll just say the wrong thing and have it used against me. But I will say that we're good people here at Shilux and we want to do better. And I, for one, am excited for that change and how much richer we can be as a publication. I wanted to share some clips from a couple of videos that in all of this have struck a chord with me. The first was sent to me by a follower. I'm not sharing it to jump on the bandwagon. I'm sharing it because it gave me goosebumps. Here in the UK, we've seen some pretty horrible videos and images of some protests and protesters not looking all that peaceful. And if you ask me, they do people of colour a disservice. I don't know who the black guy in this video is, but I think he should be the hero. Have a look. Do you have a weapon on you? No. Oh. Relax. Everybody sit down. 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 Are you walking with us? Or are you walking against us? Neither. 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 So you just walk. With a knife. So why are you why are you walking with us with a knife? We are not doing anything fighting. There's women and there's kids that are stay today. Stay, stay, stay. Relax. 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 Coming out here with a knife and destroying your knife. For what? We're not hurting you, man. I love you. I love everything about you, both. And then there's Beyonce, what a video. You might have seen it. I've watched it twice. It's calm, it's beautiful, and it's really powerful. Take a look. I pray that you continue to celebrate and value lives that appear different than your own. I know you are ready to start one of the most important journeys of your life. You are at the brink of a huge world shift. Look how far you've come and how much you contributed. Keep pushing, forget the fear, forget the doubt, keep investing and keep betting on yourself. And congratulations. From a global movement to a global crisis that led us into lockdown. 
Most of our team are still at home. We haven't seen them, but it is lovely to see the Sherlock's ladies that are here. I don't know about you, but um, it's been really nice to be at home. But as much as I've enjoyed it, working at home is a whole new challenge. Welcome, Nora and Lou. Um, how have you found it? I say ups and downs. I think when I think back to the very beginning, that feels like such a long time ago. Um, another world. Yeah. I don't know, I feel like I speak to you two every day. Um, I speak to my team every day as well. So it's been all right. I don't know. My, my worst thing actually is the chair. I've got, I don't have a proper desk chair. So literally, oh, she... I feel so uncomfortable. By the chair, I thought you meant the chair that's in your bedroom that your husband puts all their clothes on. Oh. <laughs> to oh. me, that's the chair. <laughs> <laughs> that one's, that one's been an issue as well, but this one. Um, no, yeah, just comfort at my desk is, is not good. So I feel like I sort of move around the lounge at different You get a bit hunchy, don't you, working yeah. at home without a proper really chair? Bad. I agree with that. What about Laura? you guys? Yeah, I feel like I'm, I've, I've got into the rhythm now. I mean, as, if I think back to the beginning where it was working from home, no childcare, homeschooling, getting used to it as well, I sort of, I don't know, it slightly makes me shudder. Um, but now I feel like we've got a bit of a rhythm. One of my child's, children's back at school and I've got my set up in my room. <laughs> um, and yeah, I feel, like, I feel like we're there now. I think it is all about having your setup for yeah, me yeah. like I know when I'm there that's my zone yeah um the days are long though aren't they yeah. I feel like I mean in a way you sort of dip in and out a bit more because you get distracted by your children or whatever it is but the days are long they just feel like they I sort of get to the end and I'm like I've looked at this screen for so long. Yeah. That's what we were saying yeah. screen time literally all I do from like nine till eight is there at a screen yeah. I know and then, and there's no, there's no break from that. It's not like we have like a meeting where like we come into your office yeah. or we go to the meeting room or, yeah. you yeah. know, you walk to the shop. Like there's none of that. I'm literally in front of my computer all day. And yeah. that really scares me yeah. actually. And it's, I think it's amazing. You know, what we've achieved working mm. from home oh, yeah. is amazing. But there is nothing like walking out into a room and speaking to everybody at once oh. and quickly getting feedback. And it, yeah. it's slow. You'll never take it for granted again. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, long yeah, it it just, It's it? an extra layer to mm. go through, isn't mm. it, each time yeah. to organise a Zoom call. How about you, Georgie? Well, I, yeah, I'm all right. I, I'm, I'm missing seeing people. I'm missing that, like, spark and brainstorming as a team. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's quite lonely working from home. I think at a certain level, it's more efficient I, f I feel my brother started a new job this week mm. and he started a new job remotely like that's, yeah that's, that's hard. great is it um I think it's fine but I I think we will get back to how it was I think it's great that we can do it and if yeah. things go wrong brilliant you know we always panic if the internet ever goes down yeah Shit, what are we gonna do but actually we've proven that we can work from home so it's been an amazing test and a sort of trial run but I, I hope you didn't have to do it to this extent again, again. let's put it that way yeah um let's talk about date night uh, how are you finding date night are you still doing date night and what is date night like for you Lou we haven't been doing like date night but when the weather was much better than it is now it's raining outside now um we always would go out and like we would take our lunch and um, there's an orchard that's open near us we take our lunch and have that in the orchard or we would go into kind of a school Sweet. field i bet it would look like the chicest yeah, lot of the world exactly. wouldn't it, <laughs> it, would, it would. a bit of a peony and yeah. a little glass <laughs> something Wicker and some rosé <laughs> no we're eating out of tupperware it's not it's not not as glamorous don't as ruin the illusion i've okay. got a really nice picture of you and your fiance okay you um yeah and we've been you know going out and playing backgammon has been like our like game yeah. of lockdown um doing that rather than like watching telly or watching Can a film. I just say I've lost my back camera set. <gasps> oh, I've probably so had five nights on lockdown where I've tried to find it. My husband's like, you're not going to find it. We've done this. Oh, you need to get a new one. God, God, we've such we've had game. some back gammon love over the... Yeah. Years. So you have back gammon and puzzles. I yeah, feel like so we've, we've both been on a similar... Yeah, what <laughs> losers we are. <laughs> so <laughs> date, night, date night is a date, lunch or going back gammon. Exactly, yeah. Um, it, kind of watching the sunset. That's kind of our mm. thing, which we've loved oh, doing. Laura, so you date nice. nighting? I mean, not really as such, you know, uh, it's nice if we stop together in the evening and sit. And as you said, when the weather was nice, we, yeah. I, you know, like to sit outside in the garden to eat supper. But my husband works quite late often, so it's just nice if he sits with me and watches TV. Mm. Um, to me, that's... I'm, I'm more than happy with that, but mm. not really date night as no. such. Mm. Yeah. It's hard, isn't it? We're real Friday night, go out for dinner, like... I've got, you know, the, we probably go to the same place 
most times that we go out, but I love going out to a bar and having a few cocktails and some Asian food. And it's just not the same at home, is no. it? Yeah. Like, as much as you're quite you, good at getting dressed up. Yeah, I'm quite good that. at getting dressed up, but mm -hmm. but I it's just date nights to me. You got to go and see some other four walls. Yeah, I, I yeah. just think you got to get out. It's just hard. I think that breaking out of the mm. norm, isn't it? You can't be in the same place that you've been all day. You've mm. either got to transform that space or I don't yeah. Know, and I make think at the beginning different. it was like cooking something a bit different, but even now I'm a bit like but over it. I'm yeah, bored of cooking. Yeah, same, yeah. same. Eating this three times. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I just graze now. Yeah. All I was like, you're gonna eat any proper supper? I'm yeah. like, well, I've had a box of eaten past crisps yeah. already, so probably not. <laughs> uh, I'm over it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Bed. Um, Tell me what you've been living in in lockdown. I'm not talking tracky bums here. What other things you've been wearing lots of that you thought you might not have? I don't know about you, but I, it's really nice to wear jeans today. I've not been wearing jeans much. Have you I'm not? Real, no. Oh, I've been wearing my jeans have every you? day. So have I. Yeah. I would say I've tried to keep wearing my jeans just yeah. to check that I haven't been eating too many. <laughs> <laughs> They are the acid test. I've got one pair that I didn't dare try on after the first month, and then I had to get a bit strict with myself. Yeah. And I, anyway. I yeah, I think stick to like a straight or a, or a boyfriend. Yeah, like exactly. Getting those skinnies. Like. We'll see you next year. Uh, what have you been living in now? Um, the, other than like the obvious, the thing that really springs to mind is my Birkenstocks, which I feel like I've spoken up so much on Fashion Fix on any sort of video, but. They're amazing. Yeah, I, you I, have made me reconsider them. You've actually. inspired me. I I actually, I've actually, i gone with them and I'm thrilled. I wore them yesterday with a pair of cashmere socks. Um, Lovely. For a little walk. And cozy. I was so cozy. <laughs> Don't go out in those, please. Can't it looked cheap. They were, it was like the white Becca socks and the light grey cashmere sock. I think oh, it, yeah, I can see and that. And then like stonewashed jean. I think it was chic. Yeah, I can, I can see that. Nice <laughs> Birkenstocks. Shirt. Laura, what about you? I think for me, well, I, jeans, and then I bought, um, I spoke about it in my vlog, but I bought this knitted cable hoodie from Zara, and if there's one thing that summarises lockdown for me, it is that I've worn it. <laughs> You're never um, going to want to wear it ever I know, again. I know, but it's just so good. I've worn it with jeans when it was really cold and long sleeves underneath, underneath and then, you know, when in the warmer days, in the evening, I've just chucked over a dress, or so it's been great. There are definitely going to be those items that you've lived in in lockdown yeah. that yeah. you're never going to want to wear again might as well wear a hoodie but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an someone, association isn't someone it? Saw, saw me on a zoom call they were like whoa you got your money's worth on that one <laughs> <laughs> it's like here i am again yeah a hoodie like a sweatshirt hoodie now i'm i'm yeah. quite over those for the time being yeah. i am living in wide leg silk i am living in wide leg silk trousers like Ooh, a nice. palazzo and I've got a pair by Paloma Blue, a pair from Messino, and they're quite wafty. And yeah, I love lovely. in the evening, just a sort of a t-shirt and a mm. wafty trouser, and you sort of feel like you're on the continent somewhere. Yeah, nice. And yes, so hair nice. up, a bit of lipstick. I, I'm really, yeah, my jeans haven't had much love, but my, okay. my palazzo trousers have been getting a lot of love. I think we wrote an article... We, we did. did write an article on the site that um, did really well. There's a fly buzzing around the studio. <laughs> I'm imagining you're watching it from home. There's not a lot we can do about that. There's also someone banging upstairs. It's rather annoying. Anyway, we can't do anything about that either. Um, and tell me, what have you bought? What, I asked you for one thing you've bought during lockdown. I've really struggled with purchases. I've bought, like invested in my gym kit a bit more. And then I've been desperate to buy a pair of dungarees. And I've bought... Three or four pairs now, all of which have gone back because the fit has just not been right. What's, what are you looking for in your fit? So I want something that's quite loose, okay. but not like too baggy not that too it looks... Not too wide that at it the looks, bottom. Yeah, I don't know. There's like a fine mm, line between the two. Yeah. Um, I bought some Gap ones, they weren't the right wash. I got some ASOS ones, they were way too tight in the sort of top half yeah. area. Um, I bought some short ones. Anyway, I've now bought some from a brand called Naked, a pair of white ones. So fingers crossed... These are going to be the ones. Okay. Laura, That's you love good. a pair of dungarees, don't you? I love a pair of dungarees. Where are yours from? Gap. But oh. yeah, mine are a pale wash. I don't think they do them anymore. Yeah. Can we okay. talk about your dress you're wearing now? Is this, are you both wearing gorgeous dresses? Yours is Saren. Mine is Saren. Looks yeah. awesome. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Yours is Topshop. Mine's Topshop. Yeah, I got it in the sale pre lockdown. But it's got pockets, and I love, love a dress. Love and the it. sleeves are gorgeous. And yeah. a ruffle, there's a lot of love for her dress. Thank today. you. I think Thank you look great. You. Gorgeous. Um, your, what have you bought? Mine is another dress, actually. Um, I, you know when it's you really suddenly, it gets warmer, and you look in your wardrobe, and I was like, suddenly nothing from last year 
felt right. And I saw, I have a white dress, but it's quite see-through to wear around London. And I saw somebody on Instagram wearing this dress from Warehouse. And it's really sweet. It's cotton and it's kind of tiered. It's got the little frill collar and puff sleeve, but it's got a nice half layer underneath so it's not too see-through so I think it's quite nice for the city. It's very cute I was I was like whoa that's lush Sur when I saw it. Surprising it's isn't it? It's a good it? find it's a good find. Um, well mine, mine is um, a white jumpsuit which I was gonna wear today uh, until I looked at the weather. No. Come on where's the sunshine gone? Anyway it's from Piece of White we've had a lot of love for Piece of White so I won't bang on but anyway it's awesome. It's not too short. Yeah, it's a nice length. It's, it's a really nice length. It's just cool on the shoulders. And I'm hoping to get a lot of wear out of it. You summer. will. Anyway, love that brand. Yes, yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Amazing. amazing brand. Well, um, that's it. Um, thank you both. Um, now, in a little bit, I'm going to be chatting to Dr. Georgie Fraser. She's going to be answering your burning health questions. But first, we asked Sarah Corbett Winder to select her favourite summer dresses. Let's see what she chose. Hi, I'm Sarah from Sarah's Actual Wardrobe and I'm going to talk to you about my three favourite summer dresses. I love this Faithful the Brand linen dress. It's so great because it's really breathable fabric, really pretty floral print, very sort of nostalgic and I love all the different colours in it. Lovely one with raffia, tan sandals, also really nice with white plimp soles and just the perfect summer dress. I'd wear this amazing floral dress with a raffia handbag and lovely tan sandals to keep it nice and neutral. What I love about this dress so much though is you can wear her on the shoulder or off the shoulder. Next I would have to say this Kitri dress. Last season I had the lovely black version of this, the Leonora dress. It was so chic and classic, but this season they brought out this amazing, I'd call it like a yokey mustard yellow. Really pretty shape, and it's got these fab little ties on the sleeves. I team this mega dress with some black accessories, so some lovely black sandals, a bit of raffia, but with some black on as well, and some big mega black shades. I'm also really excited about this Seffen dress. So it's an amazing green stripe. It's got a lovely tie waist, blues on sleeve, and buttons all the way up the middle. So you can get as much leg out as you want. I love the volume of this Seffen dress, and it's got pockets, which is always so fab. The tie is removable, so if you don't want to wear it, you don't need to, but I love it just cinched in, little half tie. I love this dress paired back with just some simple ecru plimsolls, just for a really fresh summer look and of course some sunnies. Thank you for watching and I hope you're as excited about the summer dresses as I am. If you want to hear more about my style or read or watch more about my style then do head to my Instagram, Sarah's Actual Wardrobe. Chances are you haven't been to the GP for a while. And if you've been saving all your questions for when this pandemic is over, then don't worry because we are here to answer them. We reached out to you on Instagram over the weekend to get your dilemmas and we received an overwhelming response. So I'm thrilled to welcome Dr. Georgie Fraser, a consultant, okay. gynecologist and women's health expert. She's here to answer those questions. Not me. I feel like people might have been worried that I would be answering their health questions. Anyway, <laughs> it's not me, it's you. How lovely to see you. Hello, and thanks for having me. Well, it's, yeah, I've known you for a long time. Yes, and you have. Anyway, it's <laughs> a brilliant. Long time. You're brilliant and straight talking, and I, that's why I like you so much. So, thanks, thanks Georgie. for coming in. We've got loads to get through. Right, okay. So, I'm hoping what we're going to do is see what areas we need to delve into more deeply on subsequent shows. But we're going to yep. kick off, we've got, we, we're covering lots. So, we're going to kick off with pelvic floor. Yeah. <laughs> fail, fail, fail. We were just saying before we went live that this should be part of the national curriculum. Yep, ladies. totally agree. Yeah. What age should we start to do pelvic floor exercises and what are the benefits? So I'm with Georgie. It should be, yeah, I think we should, it's sort of, you learn about periods. We should possibly learn that we all have a pelvic floor and know about it. So and we in should a, be in starting a young. What is your pelvic floor? 
So it's this hammock of muscles, which is all, we're all interlinked, and it's this hammock of muscles which hold, basically, wrap around the bowel, the bladder, and the ureter, um, and the uh, vagina, mm. and keep our, basically, our organs inside, what we call our pelvic floor organs. So, okay, good. I, I, I wasn't as clear on it as that. Yeah, so, so it's important, so start early. Okay, what age is early? So I think we should start, think about starting on our teenage years. You should be doing it through your, uh, when, during your years when you're having your children, etc. Because what happens in the menopause, we lose our collagen, and that is when the symptoms re relating to pelvic floor symptoms really start. So you've got to get in there early. Or you have three children and now you can't go for a run. That's me. Or do wow. a burpee. <laughs> Don't ask me to do a burpee. Yeah. I get very cross. There aren't many women. Um, <laughs> what are the best pelvic floor exercises? So that's probably better explained by a pelvic floor physiotherapist. Okay. And I think what's really important is that we might think we're doing them, but we I'm might not be doing them correctly. Okay. I'm going and up in a lift. Good. I'm going yeah. up in a lift. Going up in a lift. Brushing your teeth is what I say to ladies. So when you're brushing your teeth, do your pelvic floor exercises. And there's lots of apps as well. Okay. And daily? Yes. Okay. Twice daily, maybe. Twice daily. Okay. <laughs> Must be better. Teeth, um, pelvic floor. Teeth, pelvic floor. Okay, good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that. Um, let's talk about your bladder. Someone said, can anxiety affect your bladder? Yes, afraid so. Yeah. So, I, if you, I remember, you know, if you have an exam, you sometimes need to go, you always used to go for a wee beforehand, yes. do you remember? Yes. So, yes, then that will be anxiety. It's our normal response. So, yes, unfortunately, anxiety can mean we pass urine more often. I mean, yeah. I never don't need to go to the loo. If yeah. there's ever an opportunity to go, I'll go. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's that pelvic floor thing, isn't it? Um, someone said, why do I have the constant urge to go to the loo three or four times a night and I've never been pregnant? So actually, that's what we call overactive bladder symptoms. Um, and it's, that's actually not going to be helped by pelvic floor exercises. That is to do with your bladder is, it's got memory, it's, got, it's a muscle. And if you let your bladder go all the time, mm. it will remember that. So you're training it to do yeah, that. Yeah, so you way. pelvic train it. But it's also simple things like not having a cup of tea before you go to bed, avoiding citrus, caffeine, chocolate. Chocolate? Unfortunately, it's, yeah, it's stuff like that. So that's your simple medicine. That's it. <laughs> yeah, so no more chocolate. Really? How fascinating. Yeah, so it's, people are different sensitive. Coffee... Diet Coke, I, I'm a huge Diet Coke drinker, I'm sorry. And no, don't be, don't be. So it's things like that. It's like, it's stuff like that which can cause the bladder to contract. Really? There are medicines to treat it, but you want to do, you know, it's all about lifestyle first. So if you want to train it out of having to go all the time, mm. me. Um, so you've got how, to ignore what? that feeling and do t what we call, you've got to think, actually, I only went half an hour ago. I really well, don't When you're need lying to in bed go. going, shall I, shan't I, shall I, shan't mm. I? To me, I'm like, just get up and go. No, you know. shan't. Okay, right, right, okay. You've got to hold it. It doesn't help with insomnia. Um, advice for painful cystitis, please. So, painful cystitis, there's simple measures, and again, it's avoiding your citrus, your chocolate, your alcohol, your caffeine, drinking more fluid, clear fluids, really, uh, clear fluids, two litres a day. You don't need to drink a huge amount of urine, but some people avoid, say, oh, I don't want to go to the loo all the time, so I'm going to drink less. And actually, that just puts concentrated fluid in your bladder, okay. so then your symptoms can get worse. So simple measures like that, drinking more. Uh, cranberry juice, there is some evidence for yeah. that. And there's lots of... There are... Um, if, you're, if you are getting recurrent urinary tract infections, you can speak to your doctor. There are things like... There's um, a... Uh, a uh, pre, uh, pre, uh, uh, tablet called WD Manos, which okay. is an alternative medicine, but there is some evidence it can pre prevent urinary tract infections. Okay. And there's some other things recently on the market which has to be prescribed by your GP, such as Hiprex, which can prevent urinary tract infections, which aren't antibiotics, because I know women don't want to take That's antibiotics it. all That's the time. It. But if you speak to your specialist or your um, GP, they should have a better idea about okay. that. Let's talk about periods. Yep. Um, what is the relation, someone said, between fibroids and heavy periods? Can you just clarify what a fibroid is? So a fibroid is, is either it's within the womb or outside the womb, mm -hmm. and it increases the surface area. So it's just basically, it's benign, so it doesn't, occasionally they can be cancerous, but very rarely, okay. and they are benign growths 
in these areas because these areas are completely they're shedding each month aren't they with our periods so they yeah. can grow a, a bit and they just increase the surface area okay. so there is more to bleed from does that okay. make sense yeah it does so All you right. get heavier periods so there is a relationship a Absolutely. relationship between the two okay um if you've got polycystic ovaries pcos mm -hmm. how do you regulate your periods so the management for so PCOS is a sort of a condition which is hormonal based and firstly you do conservative things like weight loss can help if you're overweight um, and then it's really about trying to regulate you either regulate those periods and really that's the only way you can do that is with hormones and that's usually with combined oral contraceptive pill. Okay is there a natural way to ease period pains? So there's quite a lot of evidence for exercise there really? is a lot of evidence for exercise, also for the menopause. Oh, but you just want to curl exercise. up and be cosy I know, so in bed. It's, it's the worst thing, Come isn't it? And you go bottle. through, I don't, I think it's quite difficult to assess period pains because some people have horrendous period pains and some have very mild period pains, yeah. but it's how you perceive your yeah. pain. Does that make sense? No, it totally does, yeah. And hot water bottles and exercise, we know help. And then you go through your normal analgesics, your normal painkillers, and then hormonal control, the Mirena, get rid of your periods by the having coil. things like the Mirena coil. I mean, hello. It's yeah. freaking brilliant. It's brilliant. It's not very nice yeah. having it put in. Uh, yeah, but then Didn't like... enjoy that at all, but if you can get through childbirth, you can, you have can a... get through the coil. I have to say, yeah. It's and then easy. forget having I them. I barely have a period. It's amazing. Um, are, is there a reason to have heavy, long periods and no polyps? So, yes. Uh, well, it could be fibroids or it's usually just the way some people's hormones are. Okay. Um, again, it's about hormonal control most of the time. Okay. Irina. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> is there a good, good advice? Do you have good advice to manage endometriosis? Endometriosis is, um, it's really, it's, a, such, it's a, such a horrible condition. I think it's, you know, we know that it's underdiagnosed. Again, um, hormonal control, Mirena pill. And actually, if you need surgery, then sometimes uh, treatment of your endometriosis can be very useful. Okay. Um, hormones. Someone said, is there a solution for bloating and low mood two weeks prior to your period? Is that just being a woman? Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's being grumpy. I think, I think PMT is... So, we, so I remember feeling like that. As a, I don't know if you remember as a teenager, you want to just... Uh, like that and nobody ever in those days we didn't really talk about it yeah. it was sort of you didn't say oh, I've just got really really bad PMT and now I think we should be a bit like I've got really bad PMT this is the way it is how am I going to handle it again exercise <laughs> diet you know there's all the natural methods no, it's good it's, you I, I'm yeah. getting a clear message so it's all about it's you know it's about but some people that isn't enough mm. and I think we put up and actually there are other ways to deal with it mm. there's Hormonal, just it's about fluctuations of these hormones, isn't mm. it? So, try and so you're trying to balance them. Yes. So if you're trying to balance them, which was another question, you're looking at exercise. Exercise oh, that that'll just help deal with the symptoms. It's okay. not going to balance hormones because it's a natural phenomenon. You know, it's about the raise, rise in progesterone making us like, oh, and then so we have our periods and it drops. So that's why we feel better. So, is there anything you can do to balance the hormones, or is it just going to happen? Hormones. So, if you take the pill. Okay. Or back to back, then you're, you're going to avoid that. Got you. Does that make sense? So you're a pill advocate? I'm, a, I'm, I think I am a pill advocate, but you can forget the pill. I'm a big Mirena advocate. Yeah. It's a progesterone only pill, balancing those hormones. There is, um, there is actually also um, antidepressants, SSRIs, in a low dose at the second half of the cycle can have been shown to improve your symptoms as well for PMT for those who don't want to take hormones. Okay. Can we talk about the menopause? Yeah. Someone said they're suffering from migraines so they can't take HRT. Do you have any other suggestions? So I read that question actually and that's not necessarily true. You can, I, it would be, depend on the individual. Um, but you, uh, eight, uh, migraines is not a contraindication to taking HRT. Taking okay. the combined pill is, but not with aura, but not uh, HRT. Okay. Again, exercise, etc. If you're going to take HRT, if you have migraines, I would suggest the patch or the gel rather than oral. Okay. 
Someone said weight gain after the menopause. Is that a normal thing? So it's actually, so a lot of the evidence is saying it's not weight gain, it's weight redistribution. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it goes to other places. It goes here, doesn't it? And mm. that's what happens. And it's because of the hormonal changes. So that's that can be say. helped with yeah. diet, exercise, but also HRT. Okay. I'm a big advocate if it's suited. Uh, what are the signs of perimenopause? Ugh, can you answer this one relatively quickly? I feel like we need a whole session on this. Yeah, okay. So it's different for everybody. Night sweats, mood changes, low mood, okay. high levels of anxiety. That okay. can all be the symptoms. And that tend to be, oh, I'm, you know, because it's a difficult stage in our lives. Mm -hmm. Usually when you're going through the menopause, young kids, elderly parents, we put it all down to that. And actually it could be those symptoms could be okay. related to your menopause. If you've got those symptoms, how do you prepare for the menopause? Just wait for it with open arms. So I think you've got to think about it. What are you going to take? Do you want to be that person who waits and sees how you manage your symptoms? Or are you that person who's like, I think I want to take HRT. Uh -huh. I'm aware of the risks, aware of the benefits. It's about education, looking into it and preparing yourself for that. Can the marina coil help with the, with the menopause? The myrena coil doesn't help per se because the menopause is due to lack of estrogen and myrena coil is progesterone. But what it does is thins the lining of the womb uh -huh. so that if you have your myrena in, then you can just give estrogen either through patch or orally and you've got protection of your womb if you've got a womb. If you haven't got a womb, you don't need progesterone. Okay. Uh, we're going to finish with fertility sexual activity as it's been labelled ah. here. Um, will the pill affect my long-term fertility? No. There you go. Simple as that. Um, can you treat vagin, vaginismus, vaginismus, I can't say that word. Vaginismus. Vaginismus. I've never heard of vaginismus. With Botox, what's vaginismus? So vaginismus is when you tense the muscles around the vagina so that the penis can't enter the vagina and okay. or or whatever you want to enter the vagina. Okay. Uh, can, um, so is that a common thing? It is quite common. Okay. It is quite common. Can it be treated with Botox? Yes, it can, but I would probably recommend that you would go and see either a gynaecologist or also the, the women's health pelvic uh, physiotherapies are very good at trying to give you advice regarding relaxation. Botox is something that can be done. It's not, new, not normally first line, but it is possible. Okay, two final questions. Someone said they've painful, they feel pain after sex. What advice have you got? Pain after sex. So it would depend age, if it's due to vaginal dryness or is it due to endometriosis, is it positional okay. lubrication, vaginal moisturiser, vaginal oestrogen, if that's required if you're that age. Okay, and more specifically, pain after sex, post a four month C-section. Yeah, so I... Uh, um, it could, so if they're breastfeeding, breastfeeding lowers your estrogen levels, so you can have vaginal dryness. Ah. So it could be that you are, you've got an element of vaginal dryness, okay. and it could be down to that. Four months is still really early. You know, you've got a young baby, psychologically, it's exhausting. Yeah. I know, it's like a hurdle to get over Yeah, there, and you're it? kind of like, you really want, and you know, you don't have any time, and the enjoyment, and the foreplay, you know, all that mm. stuff is quite affected. So my advice would be, just take, go easy on yourself at this stage. Four months is early, isn't it? It's like that first time though, isn't it? It's like, it's like looking for a Okay. Yeah, let's end on that note. <laughs> um, thank you, Georgie. Pleasure. Um, that was great. Thank, come again, please. If you have any health related topics you'd like us to cover, then please do comment below. Next up, Matthew Jukes, wine writer and founder of Jukes Cordialities is here to give us his favorite supermarket wines available right now. Welcome to my Sheerlux vlog. So one of the things I am asked about most frequently is my fake tan. And I am thrilled to be taking you through a typical day working from home with myself. So we're out. It's all happiness today. Anyway, we're out for our hour's exercise and we've got a screaming child. So happy days. So one of the best things about living in Brighton, especially at the moment, is the beach. So all that's left to do now is just to put a little bit more of the yoghurt. It's my time to get some exercise. 
I've had to be pretty inventive with how I get this. So I've decided to run up and down from the top of my house to the bottom 20 times. I usually run about eight, nine K, but I'll report back when I finished. Oh wow, two new records. This is a great start to the day. Fastest mile, great. Sherlock's podcast listeners may be familiar with Matthew Jukes. He recently joined me for an In Conversation With podcast and we spoke for over two hours and could have gone on <laughs> longer. Uh, few people are as knowledgeable about wine as this man and I'm thrilled that he's here with us today to share the best wines in the supermarket right now. Welcome. It's lovely to be here. It really was a mammoth podcast. It was. It was great fun. It was great, We covered it? a lot of topics. I have had... More feedback on that <laughs> podcast than I have on most. I can't tell you. And more questions for that podcast than I have on most. And we chatted and chatted and the time just flew. Anyway, um, thank you for coming in. Um, right, we've got six wines That's to get right. through. Yeah, yeah. All available at the supermarket. Yep. I love this chat. It's brilliant. People always say I get really animated on this bit of <laughs> wine bits of the show. Yeah. Um, but it's just so fascinating. So we've got two whites, two roses, two reds. That's right. Yeah, I mean, when you set me the challenge of finding six wines... Clearly, I've got a lot to choose from. Mm. So I thought about the subject very long and hard and came up with these six. And there are lots of reasons for choosing each wine. Uh -huh. So we cover a lot of topics within each wine. But the main thing is that this is your sex debt for summer entertaining. Okay, ideal. Ideal. You don't want too many. I also have to say you did an amazing 10 corkers <laughs> under 12, sorry. Yep. Naff pun. Under um, 12, 12 pounds, yeah, which right. is on SL Man. So check that out as well. Okay. So, first of all, Matthew, we've got a wine from the co op. So, it's a Vadici. You, you have to pour yours. I I've have got to sort to pour of stay my, yes. away. You know, we're two metres apart here, although I think the two metre rule, maybe by the time this comes back, <laughs> it's going to have been dropped. There'll be a bit of hiding. Um, <laughs> so, this is called Vadicio dei Castellidiesi. Okay. So, it comes from Italy. Um, and so from, it's like a bottle of olive oil. It's a pretty bottle, and it's actually the sort of Vidicchio classic bottle. It's an old-fashioned style, um, and comes from the Marche region of Italy, um, which is halfway down on the right okay. um, of the boot. Um, and it's made from the grape variety called Vidicchio as well. Um, and I suppose in Italian terms, this would be um, the equivalent of a, of a Muscadet in France. So light, dry, clean... You drink the youngest vintage you can find. This is a 19, so this was hanging on a vine last September, October. And um, you can see the colour is very pale. Do we do that? Is yeah, that, yeah, give it, give it some welly. And on the nose, you just want this... God, almost, it smells uh, good. Yeah, I can ocean go in. I'm spray, going. citrus, bright, refreshing, aperitif style. That's, oh, that's what I'm good. looking for here. Six quid! Bloody hell. Yeah, that's why I love it so much. There's some real authentic, almost classic Vidicchio tones here. It's that sort of mm. apple skin. Um, it's slightly Heaven. salty. It's slightly dry. It's heaven. And that leads you into sort of food matching, lighter, lighter dishes, canapes, etc. Yes, um, it feels exactly. Is this lower alcohol than... It's Twelve and a half. Oh, it's, I mean, but that I mean, would just slip it, down. That's at dangerous. six quid, you should have a bottle of this in your fridge door because it's an emergency white. It's brilliant. It'll do everything. It'll, everyone's palate will like it because it's nice and clean. But it's a little bit quirky because it's the Vidicchio grape. It's not a predictable it. grape. But also, I love the story. I love, go to someone's house and take a six quid bottle of wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And tell them that it's six quid and this is wine. Like, yeah, 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 celebrate You don't it. have to take the most expensive bottle of wine. I think that's really cool. This is true. And also the duty and the vat and all the taxes and all of that make up, you know, more than half yeah. of that wine. So think how good it is in the first yeah. place. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Love it. Brilliant. Okay, this is a favourite of mine. Yes. So next we've got Macon Village. Um, this is... I think length. you can pour it. I, I can. As a, as a gentleman, I ought to pour it. <laughs> uh, so this is this is a this is a half bot. Half bot. So have a look. It's. Um, I actually love this. We we drink this quite a lot. I'm pretty keen on um, showing half bottles because not everybody wants to drink a whole bottle of an evening, um, and if you well, try and drink, well, not, I mean. not you, George, of course, <laughs> but if you try and sort of drink half of a bottle, you've got two problems. 
stick the cork back in, shove it back in the fridge. It's going to oxidise a little bit overnight. And it's not going to be in perfect form the next day. I mean, it'll be all right. What do you think of those? Yeah, they're rubbish. Okay. So, um, and my I husband think, gets I think you really meant a, a vacuum out there. <laughs> yes, my husband gets really upset if I don't vacuum the wine. No, it's, so I it's love terrible. that you said that. Okay. But the, 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 the temptation then is to finish the bottle. You might not want to do that. You've got meetings in the morning. You've got stuff to do. You've got kiddies. You know. I'm joking. Um, I don't so know. half bottles are pretty cool, um, and. There are some companies who've still managed to sort of make half bottles at a high quantity level, and they're in the supermarket. And Jado is one of them. Jado is one of the great Burgundy houses. So we're talking the centre of France, white Burgundy, Chardonnay great variety. So good, this. The home of Chardonnay in the whole of the world is Burgundy. Um, and it comes from Macon. You will have heard of Macon, the region of Macon, great the wine. Maconnais. Um, and Macon village, meaning it's blended across several villages. This sees a touch of oak. Just a hint, mm, hint mm, of oak, and mm. you, know, you like your oaky chardonnays. This is a foodie wine. Have I now. mentioned that? A little bit. <laughs> We've gone from aperitif with the vidicchio into a foodie wine, and now you can tackle everything. So all good. main course fish dishes, up, all the way up to chicken, pork, so veal, whatever. This is 8.50. Yeah, and it's a, I think it's two for nine quid, so it can come down. No, 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 no. Eight, this is two for nine quid, 4.50 a half bottle. What? Yes. It's a bargain. Okay, oh my God. Got get down to, grab to this. Tesco's. God, it's really good. It's Ab one of it's my favourites. Absolutely delicious wine. It's so good. It, it, it's the, it's, my local restaurant has it, and I always. It's good value. Cool. It's great. Okay, we're on to the roses. Yeah. So, so we're starting with the sparkling. I know. I, cha I sort of changed the brief a little bit in that I didn't have a, a fizz at the beginning. I thought I'd cover both bases with mm. rose sparkling. Now, this is as chic as it gets. It looks a stunner. It's from a winery called Bird in Hand. Look at the colour. I love the name. Bird in Hand is in the Adelaide Hills in South Australia. Oh. Above Adelaide, about half an hour out of the centre of Adelaide, you climb 400 metres straight up. Beautiful, idyllic region, very verdant, um, not very Aussie. There's no kind of, um, you know, barren, sandy kind of deserts. This yeah. is really beautiful. What does verdant mean? Green. Okay. Um, and um, and this is made okay. by um, Kim Milne. And Kim Milne is a master of wine. He's a very famous winemaker. Made from principally Pinot Noir. But give it a little bit of a swirl. Look at that colour. That's amazing. These glasses are good for swirling, aren't they? Yeah, that's why I've got the big glasses yeah, on the go great. today. Yeah, they're um, great. Just 12% um, alcohol. 12.5. Um, made in the what I call the Prosecco method. So not made oh. in the traditional champagne method. Waitress has a deal. So it's from sort of 16 quid down to 12, 12 quid sort quid. of thing for the rest of the month. Um, That's really nice. It's not as dry as some bubbles, is it? It's no. not, I wouldn't say it's sweet for a second. No, 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 no. It's not sweet. It's very friendly. It's very friendly. Yeah. I'd agree with that. So it's not tart, and it's not. This is why. Fruity. This is why he's been a journalist for the Mail for a twenty long time. <laughs> years because he comes up with you know you describe wines as friendly. Well, I think that is an absolute have, pleasure. And you've now inched fifty centimeters closer sorry. to me. Sorry. So clearly it is friendly. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Going to get in real um, trouble after this. <laughs> But that look, is really good. Just one final point on it. I mean, you know, people love labels and love looking yeah. at smart labels. That's a it's posh good label. label for That's a cash. good. Oh, it's right. nice. Much more drinkable than I'd say a champagne or something. Well, it's, it's just smoother, mm. you know. Really, really easy. Love it. Uh, okay, we've got a Chateau de Rue Rosé, yes. Côte de Provence, nice and pale. Absolutely. I know it's not all about pale, but I'm It's not all about pale. I, I do... You know, I'll stand by, I like a pale rosé. So do I, very much. Um, you can see both the, both the sparkling and this wine are the similar sort of colour. Um, another um, special bottle shape. Yes. This is a, cl a classic Provençal, old-fashioned bottle shape. But is that and a full-size bottle of wine? No, it's a 50. Ah. So it's 50 centilitres, two-thirds of a traditional bottle size. And it's 8.50. And it's 8.50. So you would have to sort of multiply that up. So it's over a tenner if you bought a full bottle size. So this is not a cheap wine, but I have tasted hundreds of 2019 vintage Provence rosés this year and this is one of the finest you can find and again half a litre you've got you know a quarter of a litre each which is a massive glass or two smaller glasses it's a perfect size actually that is a perfect size for a perfect regular size. I mean that's a yeah. bit mean on a it is a bit mean but it, you know, it's, and it's controlled that's, it's not mean well <laughs> I, I, I'd happily take the 50 I'd say you'd love a magnum if well I mean yeah, you know, if I have to but, um, I, but, I love, but I love this style because, again, it, it, it tastes of the sea spray from the Mediterranean. It has that lovely faint watermelon touch mm, about mm. it, faint pomegranate, um, Parma ham and melon, you know, all the oh. prawns in the world. It's exactly what you want. Plus, it's classy. 
Yeah, it's really good. Really good. Co-op as well. I love it. That's from the co-op. Um, okay, we've got two reds to yes. finish on. So we've got Sainsbury's here, a Beaujolais. That's right. 9.50. The Sainsbury's Beaujolais is a specific style of Beaujolais. Now, I am very keen on Beaujolais. I think Beaujolais is one of the most underrated regions in the world. Um, it was obviously very out of fashion 20, 30 years ago with Beaujolais Nouveau, with the sort of wines that tasted of bananas and bubblegum. And, and this is a very grown-up style. It's called Cotto granitique, meaning granitic soil. Granite, make, granite soils make the best Beaujolais. I've chilled it. So when you taste oh. this, you'll see, you can probably see from the condensation on the glass, it's a little bit chilled. And this is a segue wine from the rosé into a meaty main right? course. Is that right? In fact, you were saying on the podcast that if you want to get into red wine... You were saying start you here. start with the Beaujolais. Yeah, oh, it's a light style. I mean, it's got Smells. a dark, mm. dark colour to it, but on the palate, it's got that fruits of the forest kind of taste. Wild it's strawberries, really raspberries, you black... You can't not like that. If you did you? pick your own blackberries and shoved one in, it tastes like that. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, and it's nice and clean. Mm, it is, I agree with that. So it's a wine you can have without food, but also ease yourself into sort of summer kind of tagliata, you know, kind of nice, summery, meaty dishes. This is it. I'll leave it. That's good. I've got one little bugbear with this. Here we go. Sainsbury's on the label. Yeah. Right, call okay. me a snob. We've got a really good um, Chardonnay. Oh, I can't remember the name. I wish I could. I'll email it to you. So I'd like to know what you think. A white that we keep buying. Okay. Oh, well, it's really good. But it's just says Sainsbury's on the there's, label. There's a, way, there's a way to solve that. Take it off. Um, it says it on the back. Hand me the bottle. <laughs> there's a way to solve it, which is... Do okay. that. Okay. <laughs> But there's also another way to solve it, which everybody should do, What's which that? is to shove it into a decanter. True. Every red needs to go in a decanter. Shove it in a decanter, get go. rid of the bottle. That's a brilliant answer. Uh, and finally, last but not least, we have got something I can't pronounce from Tuscany. Morellino di Scanzano. Okay. <laughs> um, this is a beauty. And I've put one wine in which is a little bit richer. Okay. Um, it's a new uh, 2018 vintage, and the 2019 will hit the shelves as well very soon, and it's a beauty as well. I've tasted it. Um, Morellino di Scanzano is a very um, little-known region in southern Tuscany. So it follows the Chianti model. It's made right. of Sangiovese, the great Sangiovese grape um, that Chianti and Brunello di Montalcino and Vino Nobile di Montalcino and all the grapes from Tuscany are made from. But it's from a less fashionable region, therefore the price is a little bit lower. So this is a tenor, but it's got a flavour that is a little bit nearer to 20. Okay. And that's what I like about it. Now, okay. colour-wise, again, you can see it's not too no. heavy. But this time we've got a slightly more structured style. So pull myself up to my full five at ten. That's what it's like. And Delicious. this is a little bit more sort of with cheese, a cheese course, obviously with all the Delicious. Italian dishes. But this is a serious one. It's not one. heavy. It's not heavy, but it's spicy. It's, it's it good. attacks the it's palate. Really good. What do you reckon? I think it's excellent. Delicious, think it's, isn't it? I think it's really good. <laughs> it's not that like heavy. Oh, of a red no, no, wine. no. It's uplifting. Mm. So it's got that sour cherry, sour cherry feel. Which oh I my god, you've nailed it! That is six out of six. Hurrah! That doesn't normally happen. I'm, I'm quite vocal about my um, opinion. <laughs> you noticed? <laughs> um, Amazing. And can I just say, you've launched the brilliant Duke's Cordialities. Thank you. If you are having a break from too much wine or trying to do Monday, Tuesday without it, Matthew has launched the most amazing brand of non-alcoholic cordialities. Thank you, yes. And I, the packaging well. is banging. It's so cool and stylish. And they are delicious and complex and interesting. And check them out because this is all great, but we can't do it every night. No, not even I do it every night. No. Uh, thank you Pleasure. so much, as usual. All the product mentioned in today's show will be linked in the show notes below. I'll be back on Tuesday with the wonderful Ruby Hammer for Style Watch. And also Chrissy Reeves, the entertainment and royal director from OK Magazine, will be here for a showbiz gossip special, just what we needed. Plus, we'll be sharing the first part of a brand new wellness series with our wellness editor, Tor. Until then, do comment below if there's anything else you'd like to see on the show, from fashion and beauty to interiors and wellness. We are listening to your ideas. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my guests. Don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, and tell your friends. Bye-bye. <laughs>